Hello, I'm Wendy Burton. I'm a GP from Brisbane and I'm here with my colleague, Dr. Kerry McMahon, radiologist from Queensland X-Ray. And we're talking today about ultrasound scans in pregnancy. So Kerry, in the era of the NIPT and the nuchal translucency scan and so many more women having early scans for dating and for nuchal, the morphology scan, which used to be the one size fits all, the one big scan that, that everybody had, is it still relevant? Is there a place for it or is it superseded by what we're now seeing at the 13 week mark with the nuchal? Okay, thank you, Wendy. I think that's a terrific question. And yes, we are developing a lot in earlier diagnosis of um, anomalies, major genetic syndromes with the first trimester scan. And that is good for a patient. But it's important for everyone, um, the general population and GPs to know that there's about 20% of anomalies which are not detected or do not occur or become apparent until the later second trimester uh, in pregnancy. And that well, the obstetric morphology scan does remain a standard practice of standard care in Australia. So for instance, the corpus callosum is not fully formed until 18 weeks gestation, so we cannot diagnose agenesis until after this has formed in the 18 to 20 weeks. The heart, we can see that there's maybe an anomaly at 12 weeks, but we can't distinguish, is it tetralogy, is it truncus arteriosus? This sort of detail we can only get as the baby gets bigger around um, towards that 20 week mark. Um, certain other um, skeletal anomalies we may not see until the second trimester and even certain things such as milder forms of achondroplasia may not become apparent in, until the third trimester. So not everything will ever be diagnosed at the 20 week scan but we're trying to improve our quality and our expertise all the time and the detection rate is improving all the time. Sometimes in some women, particularly with um, large BMI, the scan quality is reduced and there's nothing we can do about this. Um, if we've got 10 centimetres of fat to pass the ultrasound beam through, we just can't get a good quality image. So the College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists has um, released a statement saying in patients with a BMI of over 30, particularly those with a BMI, BMI over 40, there will be reduced scan quality at this time period, particularly for diagnosis of subtle cardiac anomalies, subtle skeletal uh, anomalies or neural tube defects. And in some of these patients, not all, if we get a good anatomy, we will do everything we can by 20 weeks, but there will be a percentage of patients that we may have to get back closer to 24 weeks when the baby is bigger, when the heart is more um, easily assessed for subtle anomalies. So the morphology scan is still recommended. Um, are there some special things we need to understand women for cervical length measure? Because that's one of the other things that can be done. Yeah, um, we have a question and we will always um, try to diagnose something that's going to interfere or um, adversely affect, I say, premature delivery. So if a woman has had a LETS procedure, we will look quite closely at the cervix to see the length of the cervix or any signs of shortening. So there will still often be, in some situations, times when we'll do an endovaginal scan at this stage, particularly if we're having trouble seeing the placental margin relative to the cervix. If the placenta lies quite close to the cervix or is covering the cervix, we're going to recommend they come back in the third trimester as the lower uterine segment develops to see if that placenta is clear. If they've got a short cervix at this stage, you know, there may be intervention that we can offer them. Okay, thank you.